There is a question every cosplayer has to ask themselves when they start a project. How literally do I want to interpret this design? Sometimes getting literal means sacrificing practicality, comfort, and common sense. And I lost all of those to this Miku wig. This is by far the hardest wig I've ever attempted, and this is my three month journey to making it. But I gotta tell you, I have to present this to you and show you everything that went wrong, because this channel's not about perfection, and I haven't said this in a while, but this is not a tutorial. You're here to watch me suffer. This is how I made my giant pigtail wig for the 15th anniversary Miku X Strawberry. So now let's go back to when this started in August. So this is basically like a heavily modified version of what Kimpatsu cosplay does for her ponytail wigs, except now there's two of them. So it's much worse. So what I have here on the table is the makings of the top part of the pigtail. Before I glue all of these together, I need to do some very important things relating to the attachment. I will explain this is what's gonna go on my head. Basically the way it works is it gets inserted into this channel and then inside of it, we're gonna put a magnet. I've already cut my little channel in this. And on this one, I have cut a little cutout for the magnet. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hot glue my magnet in here. And then on top of it, I am going to hot glue some fabric because if you're just using hot glue, there is a chance that the magnet will stick to this better than it sticks with the hot glue. So the other important structural element I have planned for these pigtails is the use, some stiff crinoline net and flat steel boning. You don't necessarily need to use hoop steel boning. You could use wire. You can't like bend it. So if you're traveling with the wig and it gets pushed down on, wire might bend within the wig and then you're kind of screwed. But flat steel boning is always going to go back to this shape. Uh, so what I'm doing is I have cut a channel for it and I'm going to shove it in there. And now I'm gonna glue these together. And then while the hot glue is still drying, I'm taking the end of this, shoving it back through the hole that we have. Also, I have, this is just felt. I dyed this felt to kind of match the color of the wig. And this is how I'm actually going to attach the wefts onto this thing. Once all of this is together, we're going to loosely hot glue this onto it. And then we'll be able to use this to sew our wefts onto it. So I'm gonna finish hot gluing these and then we get to the weird netting thing that we're doing. Netting! Okay, so the reason I've gone with stiff net is because the biggest enemy to this wig is weight. And stiff net is very lightweight, but I need some kind of structure so it doesn't all have to be hair, so we don't have to spend a ton of money on hair. So this is sort of the innards. I'm gonna sew one side together and then I'm going to install a boning channel of horsehair braid. The reason why I'm using horsehair braid as a boning channel is because it is about the same like uh, opacity as the stiff net. We're going to go with transparent over anything else. But so now that we have our little boning channel, I'm going to take more flat steel boning and I'm gonna tape up one end so that it will actually go through. So now I'm gonna cut it a little bigger than the actual I'm gonna take this side and I'm going to push that into the other side of the channel and close it up like that. Now, so the thing is, is I want these raw edges on the outside because they help grip the hair as it's going around. And I'm just going to, to the best of my ability, sew up the other side of this now. However, I am leaving quite a gap at the top because this part actually needs to go over our little EVA foam structure. Now we have this weird, like fishnet thing with a bone in it. So now I'm gonna glue the fishnet to the pigtail stump. And the only important thing here is I wanna make sure that the loop from the pigtail stump is sticking out of the net. And then I'm gonna wrap it in the felt. And that is the inside structure. So now we can move on to the hair. I bought, so everything I got came from Arda Wigs. Uh, the problem though is that Arda has quite the back order problem. If something you want is out of stock, it might be a while before 
you can get it. I specifically wanted the color mint. The figure doesn't really have the traditional like Miku teal and Arda makes a very pretty mint. However, uh, I knew I needed a lot of hair for this and I also needed to buy a base wig. We'll take, we'll get to that. I haven't even touched the base wig yet. I was going to buy two packs of long wefts. So there would be one pack per pigtail, but I was waiting cause I didn't want to drop all the money on it. And then one day I refreshed it and the long wefts in classic and mint were gone. <laughs> And if you're unaware, Arda actually has two kinds of fibers. They have the classic fiber and the silky fiber. Now the silky fiber is less good for like voluminous wig. However, they did still have the silky long wefts, but I really didn't want to make the whole thing out of silky fiber. I felt like that was just going to be a struggle bus. So what I did was I bought my base wig and I bought a Venus which is a very long wig, but it has bangs. This wasn't a bad idea. However, it was more expensive than buying two packs of long wefts. So that kind of sucked, but that's what I get for waiting. Anyway, what I have done already, I have cut the Venus in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it into pieces essentially, so I can harvest the wefts and put them all over this. Ooh. Um, so now we get to the point where once this starts getting wig fiber on it, it's not gonna be able to lay on the table like this. I need to hang it from something. And unfortunately for me, I don't have a great way of doing that. So what I've been doing is getting a clamp and clamping it onto the door. Okay, so I have a couple weapons at the ready. The most important being a curved needle and thread, but I'm going to be teasing them as I sew the wefts on. So I also have all the stuff I have for teasing. So fine tooth comb, hairbrush, got to be glued, some alligator clips, and this mysterious concoction, get your mind out of the gutter. Uh, let me explain what this is. On the last wig video I did, somebody left a comment that was like, got to be glued is the best hairspray for wigs because it's glue based. So it's basically spray glue. And so I thought to myself, why not make spray glue? Now don't panic. This isn't like E6000 and water. I took tacky glue and mixed it in water and put it in a spray bottle. It might not be as strong as using straight up tacky glue, but I've tested it and it does work. And the cool thing is, if you have a fine enough glitter, you can put glitter in this. And as long as you don't really oversaturate it, it works about the same as hairspray. I am gonna be using both, but this I think is a little stronger. I don't know, this might be a useless tool, but I think it's pretty cool. And I do think it helped on the first pigtail. Anyway, I'm gonna start sewing wefts onto this thing, which is pretty self-explanatory. So I'm just gonna do it. I have cut the wig into chunks and I'm going to sew the chunks on where it feels appropriate. And I will get back to you when I start teasing things. Okay, so I have been teasing these as I go because for me, that's just easier. Do recommend watching the last video I put out on wigs if you're not sure how to back comb, but this is a little different. Oh, another weapon I need, hold on. Tiny baby straightener. The goal is to take this nice, lovely straight texture and make it a poofy, frizzy texture. And the way I'm gonna do that is by teasing the out of it and then heating it with the tiny baby straightener. Uh, you can also do this with a hair dryer, but I like the tiny baby straightener because I feel like it gives me more control over where the heat is going. And I honestly feel like it does a better job of making frizz. You'll notice I'm doing like little, like tiny strokes. I'm not going all the way up because when you do that, all you make is like really big knots and you don't want knots, you just want frizz. Mostly we're trying to create texture. The poofier the texture, the more of the net it covers. And the poofier the texture, the better it sticks to the net. That's good enough for a first round of tease. Yes, I said first round of teasing because there's going to be multiple per piece. I take my baby straightener, my baby straightener in it. Also, the reason I'm using this is because I broke my good hair dryer and I haven't bought a new one yet. And I kind of have a hair dryer right now so this is what we got I'll leave this one alone for a minute and let it cool and then we'll start teasing the next section I'm gonna tiny baby straighten that one so now this one is pretty cooled off I'm gonna tease it again you do this multiple times it's because it's kind of just like no no fiber unteased no stone unturned no fiber unteased tiny baby straightener again 
So now that we have a pretty intensely teased piece of hair, I'm gonna start brushing it. What you don't want is knots. Because even though this is like the lowest layer of the wig, this is gonna be at the very bottom, you're still gonna see the knots. So now we have one section of a big fluffy piece of hair. Now I'm gonna take my big fluffed out section and I'm going to spray it with got to be glued on both sides of it. And then I'm gonna hair dry it. Now this is ready to go into its permanent swoop. The thing about this Miku wig is both sides are like spiraling into it and one side is going one way and the other side is going the other way. So it's important to make sure that you are spiraling one one direction and spiraling the other the other direction. This is left pigtail. It's going this way. So this one needs to go that way. Double checking because I don't trust myself. Okay, this, you need to go that way. Okay, so I'm gonna take my big fluffy thing and I'm going to nicely wrap it around and alligator clip it to the bottom of the netting. But first, I'm gonna spray the bottom of it with the glue. I'm gonna do a really light hand on this because I don't wanna saturate it in glue. I just want some glue on it so it sticks to the netting a little better. And then I'm just going to got to be glue it and hairspray it and that is the first section. So now I'm gonna do that to the rest of the hair and it's all basically the same all the way up to the hair on the very top. I want the frizzy texture all the way throughout because with the amount of hair I have, it's really the only way for me to cover the entirety of the netting. So I'm going to do the exact same thing, sewing pieces on one at a time, teasing them one at a time, and then hairspraying and clipping them one at a time. So I'm going to fluff and spray and glue all of the rest of this wig. And then I have a couple things I'm gonna do to the bottom of them to secure them in place. Okay, so all of the Venus wefts are on here now. Haven't put the silky wefts on there yet because I'm gonna do something first. So the clips are holding everything in place right now. And you can see we have our little bone sticking out of the bottom. And then the net is also kind of sticking out of the bottom. So what I have and what I'm gonna do is I have a piece of this 20 millimeter foam, just really thick EVA foam. You could just use 10 millimeter foam, but I have scraps of this I'm trying to get rid of. And I have cut it roughly into the shape of the bottom of the pigtail. And I also cut a hole in it. And then also with that, I have two zip ties and a piece of felt that's big enough to go around the edges of it. So what I'm gonna do first is zip tie this to the bone on the bottom. And then I'm going to essentially hot glue the net onto this while this is going on. And at the same time, hot glue the ends of these pieces of hair onto this. Basically is secure this in place with zip ties and then glue the net and all of this hair onto the edges of this and then seal it all in by hot gluing this on top. So, now this is where you wanna be careful because when you're gluing the net on, you can very easily burn yourself with the hot glue. So I definitely recommend these little rubber thimbles to protect your fingers from the hot glue. So now, it looks like a mess because it is a mess, but all of your ends should be secured down within that little felt. And when we get to the silky wefts, those are just going to be hot glued on on top of this. And then we will also have wefts that come down that form the very bottom of the pigtail, but those are just gonna get hot glued on on top of this felt. So that hair got a little trim before I added the green wefts on top of that. And then I added a red band of felt on top of that because that's where the bows are gonna go. And that is where progress stopped for several months. Well, I think the last time I shot anything about the wig, it was like August and now it's October 31st. Happy Halloween. But the reason being the original structure for the wig was just not working. I tried so many different internal contraptions to try to get the weight evenly distributed across my head, but nothing was working. Everything was so painful because by the time I got done putting all the hair on the pigtails, they were just 
too heavy for the attachments I had done to the point where that one little magnet, which had actually worked pretty well to keep just the base on there was no longer working. So I had to make a really hard decision and I gutted the pigtails. They got messed up. They are not going to be perfect on the tops, but I had to do it. It was do that or completely start over. But the thing is, is I think it's important that you see that first failure so that you know why it didn't work. The first thing was that the EVA foam base was in and of itself too heavy. And the little wire struts that have worked for me in the past for pigtails that are really tiny was not enough like physical direction. I don't, I don't know physics but it just wasn't enough length for it to hold onto those pigtails. So for the last two months, I have been racking my brain, trying to think of a material that was lightweight and sturdy enough to do this. And it finally smacked me in the face. Wood. Wood is lightweight. And the only problem with it is cutting it. But I bought me a little hacksaw. And well, this is my little practice one. So as you can see, it works pretty well. Uh, I think this is what I showed off at the end of the blouse video. So you've kind of already seen a preview of this, uh, but I'm gonna remake this one because this one is kind of disgusting looking. I know this method can hold up the weight of the pigtails. And the big thing is that it balances at the very top of my head. And that is the other big key thing. The only way to balance something heavy on your head and not have it be painful is to distribute the weight right here at the center of your head. Kim Potsu's method that I was trying to go with, it works really well. But the problem with what I was trying to do was I had too little of a support and nothing connecting them in the center. But now, they connect in the center. So here's an overview of how this works and how I'm making it. So this is pretty simple. It's gonna be two small pieces of the dowel cut at a 45 degree angle. Then I take my two little trapezoids and I would glue them together. This is the thing that's gonna go on top of the wig. Then I took two long pieces of the dowel and gave them both a 45 degree cut on one end. This is what's gonna actually support the pigtails. Those are then gonna get wood glued to the little trapezoid before getting a pilot hole in them and screws going into them, securing them to the base. I also added these two little metal brackets because I don't know shit about woodworking and the one screw just did not seem like enough. But then the base got three holes drilled in it that were one size bigger than the three quarter inch bolts I have for the plate that goes inside the wig to hold it all in place. The plate itself is EVA foam covered in warbler with three holes for the bolts, which I then covered in green felt, adding two layers on the bottom with some polyfill in them to give me a little pillow under those bolts. I'll show you how this all goes together in a minute, but with that finally figured out, I guess I'll talk about the base wig now. All right. Time to talk about the base wig. Ignore all the stuff sticking out of this, it'll get explained. But I chose a Magnum Long from Arda. Picked the Magnum Long because it is a really beautifully layered wig and the wig already being layered is gonna help so much with styling. I also chose the Magnum Long opposed to the Magnum because I have a really big head and the regular Magnum is a little short on me and I did wanna have enough hair to like come all the way down under my chin. If you have a smaller head, you could probably just go with the regular Magnum, but if you're like me and you have a big head, the Magnum Long might be a good choice for you. I have opted out of making this a pigtail wig, like the back of it a pigtail wig, just because anytime I've made one prior, there can be a lot of like fitting issues in the back. Pigtail back wigs can be a little more delicate and this has to support a lot of weight. So I've just gone for the classic short hair in the back, Miku, because it's just gonna make my life wearing this wig a lot easier. To start working with this wig, I put it on my own head to make sure I knew where I wanted the bangs to be. And I put a little rubber band on the bangs to know where I wanted to cut the little <laughs> anime bangs. Then it was time to give the base wig the same level of poof texture that we have on the pigtails. So I went through and I teased the entire thing did the whole process of teasing, heating, reteasing, reheating, 
and brushing it out on the entire base wig. And doing that just makes it so much easier to style. But yeah, I did that to the entire base wig and got a frizzy mess. And then when I brushed her out, I still had a frizzy mess. <laughs> but you can see how much more easily the fibers style when you give a wig this texture. And before going through and smoothing the hair, I did some steaming to get the bangs where I wanted them to be. And then I got to smoothing with the tiny baby straightener. And to style her, I kind of just played with the fibers until they kind of sort of looked like the reference photo. And I steamed them into these little curl little spikes. I don't entirely know how to explain the process of this because I literally just winged it. But because the Magnum is so well layered, it does make it really easy. Okay, I really like it. I think it's super cute. Uh, this was frustrating the hell out of me. These I have a lot of trouble with. These stupid little anime bangs are so hard sometimes. Uh, but this, this is okay. Will it stay okay? I don't know. <laughs> Hopefully it won't get too messed up. Let me put the base for the pigtails in it. But I'll show you. To keep it on my actual head, I have installed two little combs and two little wig clips. And sometimes I think those are called toupee clips. Before it all goes together, I still need to make all the accessories because those are actually what's gonna hide the wooden structure. So, accessories. So I did the little headband ruffle the exact same way I did all the ruffles for the biceps and the thighs. So those are in the last video if you need to know how to make that. But now I'm moving on to the little flouncy ruffles that are going right over the pigtail. These ones are not just scallops, they're scallops on scallops. I'm used to doing scallops in the right sides together method, but for really tiny ones, like the ones going on the big scallops, that would not work super well. But then recently, Chikupiu, Chikpiu, Chik, Chiku, Chikupi, <laughs> Chikupi, this cosplayer. <laughs> who's an incredibly talented cosplayer and is also in our Discord, shared how she does her machine scallops with a scallop stitch on the sewing machine, which seems to just involve the stitch and some freight check. And I thought I would try out that method for the first time for these scallops on scallops. So what I have on the table right now are these two pieces that have the big scallops marked out, and then the little scallops are just gonna be made with the stitch. Uh, ah, this one does not have a scallop stitch. But this one does. Oh, I guess it does. <laughs> but <laughs> truth be told, I actually broke my bobbin casing in the process of making Miku. And I've ordered a new one, but it's not here yet. So the brother's on a break and the faff is taking over the duty. And the other thing I have on the table right now that's very important is some tearaway stabilizer. Uh, this goes essentially under the fabric while you stitch it uh, and it helps stabilize everything. So those scallops come out nice and clean. And then when the scallops are done, you just rip it all off. So basically what I'm gonna do is pin the stabilizer onto these pieces, do the scallop stitch on the machine, rip all the stabilizer off. I think I'm gonna put the fray check on prior to cutting it. I also decided to do it with a little paintbrush. I don't know if this is like a smart or a dumb thing to do, but it's what I decided to do. Cause honestly, it seems like it would be easier to put it on while there's excess fabric and maybe that'll make it easier to cut out. I don't know. I've never done this method before. Uh, Fray Trek is dry and I ended up <laughs> giving up on the brush halfway through, but by the way, Kitty is here. Say hi to Kitty. Now I'm gonna take my little curved embroidery scissors. I think you can buy like even smaller ones in this, but these are from Fomore. Like I said, I bought them at Dragon Con. And I'm gonna go through and cut all these little scallops out. Kitty, <laughs> you're not being helpful. <laughs> Kitty, Kitty, okay. Move, we're gonna move your butt. There you go. Okay, is this not just so precious? Look at it. Eee. Okay, so it, it'll sit like this. And I went ahead and I just surged this bottom edge and I'm gonna sew it directly onto the pigtail so I don't have to worry about attaching or detaching it. But that's our little head ruffle. So now we can move on to these little strawberry headphones. Okay, so these little strawberry headphones, I have opted to do these with foam core. Foam core is basically just like this papery stuff that has foam in the middle of it. You could do this with EVA foam. I just don't have any EVA foam that's like at this thickness. You can get this at like Michael's and sometimes if you're lucky, they'll have it at Walmart, but it's basically that like 
presentation board stuff. The thing I like a lot about it is that it, it is really stiff. Uh, it's also really easy to cut. And that is particularly important for this because I have to do some pretty small and delicate cuts. I have made myself this little pattern in Illustrator. You can download this on my Patreon, it's free. The two things I really recommend you do this with, even if you do this in EVA foam, are a metal ruler. This is gonna help you get a really straight cut and an X-Acto knife. I know a lot of people are box cutter people. I know like every cosplayer you ever see uses box cutters but I am and will forever be an X-Acto knife bitch. I have already traced out my pattern pieces, but the big thing I, I wanna talk about with the cutting is I'm cutting everything uh, as a bevel. What I really mean is I'm cutting everything on a 45 degree angle, right? So instead of cutting straight down like this, I'm cutting at an angle. That was probably not smart to like pull that by my face, but. The other thing that really helps is when you cut your piece if you take your ruler and you line it up on the side that has the piece on it, so instead of, so this, instead of that, it helps keep you from like cutting into the piece, right? Cause the ruler is in the way. So all I'm really doing is putting my ruler down. Um, I start like further over and I go in at 45 degrees. And you just do that all the way around the piece. And the reason I'm cutting it at a 45 degree angle is because it lets us do mitered corners as opposed to abutment corners. And miter corners are just like much lower profile. You can't see where the pieces meet each other. Uh, that should just pop out. See, but you see how we have all these nice 45 degree angles. So here's the one I already finished. So when we combine that with a 45 degree angle on the edges, we can glue them at the angle. So then they look like that when they're done. And then this piece, I'm actually gonna cut on the straight because this is the tiny little detail piece. This is the hardest thing to cut out. It's also really important when you do a little detail piece like this that you use a very sharp blade. So you want like a brand new X-Acto knife blade. Okay, now this is the hard part. I'm actually not gonna use the ruler because it is really hard to get the ruler like on top of this. Woo! Okay, now these little triangles um, I'm actually not gonna cut all the way through. I'm really just gonna like cut into the paper and the foam and like take the top layer of paper off. And I did again, just switch to a brand new blade for this part. Okay. And that's our little detail piece. Now I can start gluing stuff. But when that's dry, all I'm gonna do is give that a couple coats of Mod Podge, a couple coats of paint, and then I'm gonna glue them together and I'll be done. I think if you're seeing footage of resin going on them, then I put resin on them. <laughs> I think I am actually gonna put resin on these. They are still being glued right now, but I figured I'd talk about resin. Uh, so <laughs> I've hot glued some Diet Coke cans to the bottom of this box so I can put the headphones on top of it and pour the resin on there. But I also need to cast a bunch of strawberries because there's a bunch of strawberries. Uh, this is an ice cube tray that I bought at Kroger like a year and a half ago. <laughs> but the thing about resin is most resins are like really, really dangerous and really toxic. And that's not something I knew for a really long time, but I did do a bunch of research and I found, there are a couple brands that say they're non-toxic. I bought the brand Art Resin and they have the claim that they are non-VOC, non-COV. But the, the thing you wanna look for is if, it, uh, if they have fumes and these supposedly do not have fumes, which means I can actually use it inside. If the resin doesn't say that it's really toxic and you should wear a respirator. Your pets should also wear respirators. Uh, I'm gonna take extra precaution. I am a little paranoid still, so I'm gonna open one of these windows, kick all the cats out of this room. I feel like most people at this point know how to use resin. The, the one thing I think I see people not really know is if you wanna put glitter in something, you need to put down a layer of just the resin first, and then you can add the glitter on top of that. And that way it will be like suspended in the resin. Cause if you don't do that, it's all gonna sink to the bottom like a cake. If you've never ever seen or done anything with resin before, here's your real quick explanation. You mix each of these one part to one part. In most cases, some are different. You mix the sh out of it. Like you really gotta mix it, especially if you're putting it on top of something, you better mix that for like at least three to five minutes straight 
or it's gonna not set. And if it doesn't set, your entire piece is completely ruined forever and ever because it'll just be sticky and be really careful. And if you can't do it with a respirator, don't buy the cheap kind. Okay, so there's a f ton of bubbles in here. So I think what I'm gonna do is dump some of this excess out of this piece because this stuff looks really good. So, yeah, I think that was the move. Yeah, I gotta change gloves now. I can't touch the phone. Okay, new gloves gotten. Yeah, of the reviews I saw, the big thing people were saying was that this stuff is bubbly as hell. Used a lighter to get some of those bubbles out, but then I prayed and prayed that the resin would set. I was actually super paranoid that they wouldn't because the instructions say to do the resin by volume. And if you were paying attention, you may have noticed I did it by weight. So for a whole day, I was just shitting my pants thinking they'd be sticky forever, but they did set. Let me tell you about the final glue stage and then we'll get to how this all fits together. There's a lot of pieces to this wig puzzle. Okay, so I'm gonna try to explain what I've been doing with the glue at this stage. So we've reached like the very final glue stage and what I've been doing, these sections here in the couple tests I've done with it on my head, these were getting super messed up because it's like touching my body. So on these sections here on the inside, I am absolutely sad saturating them with the glue. Uh, an update on the glue mixture though. When I first started this wig, I was actually kind of mixing it at whatever ratio I thought would work, which was a lot more water. But at this stage, I have switched it to a one-to-one -one ratio and it is working miracles now. I am able to very easily get the glue on and then smooth it out with my hands. And because it's in a spray bottle, I'm also able to like, penetrate into the wig. I know that sounds so gross, but I am. I'm able to get it really far up into the wig so that the inner layers can get glue on them too, which has been pretty poggy. So I do actually really recommend doing this. You remember how I said you could put glitter in the spray bottle? That did not work. Uh, what did work though, was putting the glue on, smoothing it out with either my finger or a paintbrush, and then taking a paintbrush and basically painting glitter on, that worked. And I've done that in a couple places to like add swoopy dimension to it. And then the other technique I was doing for these outer parts, I want these to be nice and glued too, right? But they don't need to be as crunchy <laughs> as these parts. So what I was doing was I was actually spraying the glue onto my hand and then taking my hand and smoothing over the wig. And that did a really good job of getting a nice layer of glue on there without muddling everything and without making it as like crunchy textured as it is over here. Uh, I'm also like heavily saturating the bottoms with glue, especially right here. But yeah, it's, I can do that. And you can see it's all kind of staying together. So that's pretty cool. Oh, also I did the bows. You wanna see the bows? Look at this. So these are basically just shorter versions of the bows I made for the backside of the dress. And that's in the dress video. So if you wanna learn how to make these, that's in that video. Yeah, these are gonna go here. Oh, look at her. I'm so hyped. But I have a couple more rounds of glue to go, but when that's done, I'll show you how it all gets put together. Okay, I can finally show you how this goes together. So the base wig. So the headphones are on little bungee clips like that, so they can clip in. And then the strap is sewn into the wig. Then I have the plate and I install a little comb on the plate and this goes into the wig like that. And I did have to cut into the netting of the wig to like make the holes to get them in there. So now I can put this on the wig head. And then before I put this on there, I'm actually taking this weird little contraption. So this is the head ruffle that now has the strawberries and bows and some daisies on it, a little piece of red micro suede, and then two pieces of green felt. And basically the way this works is this gets put onto the bolts like that. And then I take the struts and put them on top. And now I can grab my pigtails and put my pigtails onto the bolts. So I kind of have to do them at the same time So to do this, I have installed two straps at the top of the pigtails that have three grommets in them. And then they just slot over the bolts. And then I take some nuts and washers. 
can put those on and that keeps that from moving. And then I can take my ruffle, which has two little wig clips on it and pull that over and it's done. Okay, I look really silly, but I have almost the whole cosplay on and then I'm gonna put the wig on and it'll be the first time I've seen myself in the whole cosplay. So I've got the camera rigged up to capture that moment in the mirror. So let's go. This is a lot. <laughs> I will say though, I have one more surprise that I haven't showed you yet, but you are getting a video on it. I have made the fork. Okay, I know it's really over dramatic to use that song, but I, I feel like the wig deserves it. This wig, was the one thing about this cosplay that when I looked at that design, I really had no idea how I was gonna do it. And three months later, I made it work. And I'm really, really proud. So next time you see a cosplay that you really wanna do, but you have no idea how to do it, do it anyway. Because when you do manage to figure it out, it is so much more rewarding. If you're working on a cosplay right now, or you got something done while this was playing, please let me know. I love to read about what you guys are doing in the comments. And it helps the channel a whole lot if you break a needle on that like button for me. Also, we just hit 5K, so a huge thank you to all the people who are breaking those needles on the like button and leaving your comments. Because when you do that, it shows the videos to more people, which just expands this little community we have. So thank you for helping it grow, and thank you for being a part of it. If you have any questions or just want a soft and comfy Discord community to come to, please come join the Spacecraft Discord. <laughs> There's a link in the description as always. And a big thank you to my big support tier patrons, Pins, Snip, Claire, Zen, Emily, Cam, and Julian. If you want to support the channel, you can check out my Patreon or now YouTube has this newfangled thing called a super thanks. So if you want to one time send some love, it's right there below the video. But if you're just watching, commenting, liking, or subscribing, you're supporting the channel too. So thank you. One more thing, I did, I did get accepted into the Holiday Matsuri costume contest. And I won't spoil what I'm doing, but if you're going, and if you have a light stick, I would love it if you set it to Miku Green for me. Okay, thank you so much for watching, bye. Holy shit, that's me. I, w I really, I really don't have anything to say. They call me Miku, Miku, Ryu. Oh.